I'll get started. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jen Cramond and I'm our Senior Manager of Premium Supporters Team at Mission Australia. I'd like to welcome you to our virtual service visit for today. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. I'm here on Darkinjung land on the Central Coast and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and future for they hold the memories, the culture and dreams of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and continual relationship with the land and I recognise the importance of the young people who are our future leaders. Um, I'll hand over in a moment to Belinda Grossetti, who is here to talk about our Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program. I just want to do one um, small bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to submit during the presentation, can you please put those in the Q&A box and we'll come to those at the end um, so Belinda can answer any of those. Without further ado, over to you, Belinda. Thank you, Jen. Um, if I can have the slides up. Thank you, Dan. Welcome everybody today to discuss the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program. Um, as Jen mentioned, I'm Belinda Grossetti, otherwise known as Belle. Um, I have managed the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program for five years now. Um, among some other community services programs within the region. Um, this, I must say, um, holds a special place in my heart and the people involved in it. Um, and I'm very excited to present to you the work that we do within it and um, hopefully introduce you to a couple of our um, long-standing members. So thank you again for joining us and um, let's begin. So I also would like, to, oh, sorry. <laughs> Skipping. I would like also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. Um, I'm here on Yuan land today, and I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future, for they hold the memories, the culture and dreams of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I recognise and respect their corridor heritage, beliefs and continual relationship with the land, and I recognise the importance of the young people who are our future leaders. So just again, a little bit of housekeeping with this um, and just a, a note that this presentation um, does actually include references to and images of people that have now passed. Um, we have lost a, a number of, um, of members and family members since we actually created this presentation. So we were um, due to present this last year, but due to some incidences with COVID, we're unable to. So I apologise for those that were ready to watch our presentation last year and have had to hold out um, for this period of time. Um, but we would like to celebrate the contribution that these people have made to their families, the program and the wider community. So we've still included them within this presentation. Okay, next slide. Thank you. Um, in saying that, I would like to dedicate this presentation to Taj Hart. Um, Taj has been a member of the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program since a young child. Um, Taj came into the care of his grandmother, Glenda, at the age of two, along with his brother. Um, Taj was a much loved member of the group, especially by the younger children. Um, he was an avid fisherman, as you can see, and um, enjoyed showing his skills off to some of the other grandchildren who referred to him as a cool big brother. Um, Taj loved his football. He played in a lot of our local um, competitions and he was an avid Roosters fan, as you can see, was celebrated here. Um, Taj was well known as being a polite and respectful young man. Um, he would always stop and give his time and energy to the other grandparents of the group and the other children of the group. Um, tragically, uh, in late February 22 of this year, Taj was taken from us at the age of 18. Um, very devastating for the group and for staff, obviously, and um, everyone was quite rocked by the news. We ended up um, celebrating Taj's life in our first face-to-face -face group in Nara um, since COVID lockdown. Uh, the group itself was at a capacity level that I have not seen before, and this was all in respect for his grandmother and for Taj. Um, the group attendance also included um, old staff and new staff, as well as the chaplaincy support from Mission Australia. 
um, we had a new member of the group join that day as well. Um, and she was very taken with the support that was given. Um, we also allowed her to share her story coming in. Um, and we were heartwarmed to see that the group welcomed her um, and ensured her that she had found her place within the group um, as she has no other family or support at this current time. Um, she was brought in and welcomed by the group um, and told that she now has her support and all the family that she needs moving forward. There was a full attendance at the funeral for Taj the following day, including the entire group from NARA, um, including our newest member, which I thought was um, quite telling of the support required, but also the support given by this group. They really are a family. So moving forward, this presentation is for Taj. Thank you. So with our target groups in our grandparents raising grandchildren programs, the obvious target is that our grandparents who are raising their grandchildren for whichever reason. But if we look further into it, our more vulnerable groups include those who are great grandparents raising their great grandchildren, um, our stay at home carers who are isolated within that uh, caring environment. We have veterans, we have blended families. Um, many of our um, grandchildren that come into this scenario are impacted by some form of trauma. As you can imagine the situation in which they left um, mixed with mental health issues. Um, in some cases, they're coming from family of addiction. Um, sometimes it's loss of family. And we see a lot of these children impacted by trauma and also some form of uh, learning delays, um, disabilities inclusive of oppositional defiance disorder, ADHD. Um, we have a, a number of members who have um, autism and all of these things then obviously create just an added pressure for grandparents on, when taking um, these children on board. Uh, the majority of our grandparents are retirees, though some have returned back to part-time work to support um, the financial pressures that come from taking on young children. Um, again, this, so we do have our workers. We have our self-funded retirees, where this again adds additional pressure for the future that they anticipated they would have in their retirement. We have war widows, so single grandparents. Um, we have uh, grandparents who were born overseas, so with a different cultural heritage that then imposes some disconnect with um, their grandchildren originally um, that we work through. Um, benefit recipients, so those that are on pensions or potentially care allowance or carer pensions, dependent on their age. And of course, we have our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of the group where um, we are ensuring that we are culturally sensitive in the delivery of our service. Um, with our programs, they commenced back in um, 2004. So that started with a NARA group. The NARA group um, was started by a group of um, local grandparents, just in a local church, who found that they were not the only uh, grandparents in the situation that were needing support. And so they came together and they rallied um, in order to receive some funding to keep this program going. Um, they were the squeaky wheels, as we like to call them, um, and they're quite pleased with that because they were indeed successful um, in receiving some notoriety within the community and in turn a program was created and funded to which case Mission Australia stepped in in 2004 and began um, the official Mission Australia NARA Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program. Um, many of those founding members still to this day are with this program um, and continue on as mentors. Um, we are very, very lucky that even though the government funding that, was, that originated for this group um, is no longer there, that we continue to this day um, very thankfully to um, some very generous donors who have continued and stayed with us. Um, and again, then brings us to here so that we can then celebrate the work that we've been able to continue to do with that. Thank you. So with the unique concerns within our Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program, when grandparents carers um, commence care of their grandchildren, Many of many times this is something that happens very quickly 
um, and can often come as a result of a sudden crisis where the children are either removed or, as I spoke about before, we have had incidences um, of a loss of a parent where then the children are moved into the grandparents' care. Um, there are the age and generational gaps. So I often joke myself with the grandparents that I have an eight-year-old and at the age of 40, she could handle a mobile phone way better than what I can. So if you're imagining a 60-year age difference, um, there are many things, just societal as well as uh, technology, that they do struggle to um, stay up to speed with, with their grandchildren, um, especially if they're taking on their grandchildren um, suddenly and if those grandchildren are of an age, um, teenagers such can be quite difficult. Um, and our grandparent carers themselves feel isolated from their peers. That's probably one of um, the most um, spoken about uh, concern of our grandparents is that immediately when taking on the care after the, they, the grandchildren settled into their care, um, they were suddenly noting that the people that they surrounded themselves with um, were no longer there, be it that um, they had become um, too busy to interact with the usual groups and community events that they were doing. Um, and also to the point that there was a lack then of connection around what our grandparents were going through um, and a lack of understanding. So with this group, what we find is bringing these grandparent carers together creates that support network and that peer network that they felt isolated from. Um, our grandparents are, um, again, the, probably the most um, successful in raising the grandchildren when we've seen them moved from one area to another when they're trying to settle uh, grandchildren into a um, permanent care arrangement. Um, it is often the grandparents fighting for that custody. Um, but once that happens, as you would understand, the grandparents have an understanding of the history of the child's needs. They have an understanding of the history of the child's parents. Um, a lot of the time, the grandchildren have had constant contact with their grandparents previously, and so this creates a safe placement and a stable placement for the child. Um, it also keeps families together. So we have noticed in some of our most successful circumstances that by a grandparent taking on the care of their grandchild, it allows space for the parent to receive the assistance and support that they need to get to a healthier place within their life that potentially then we can look at restoration of the child to their parents' uh, care. This has happened recently um, and is a story that we celebrate. Um, one of our grandchildren was in the care of his grandparents for a long period of time. Um, within that time, they struggled through uh, behavioural issues, um, he was incredibly difficult um, to regulate at times. So we took them through a diagnostic um, assessment for him. Um, and he was diagnosed with ADHD and ODD at that time. Um, we were then able to source early interventions for him. Um, and he uh, was able to also start to see his, um, his mother in um, a supervised role and then um, from beyond there unsupervised. And most recently, he has been restored into mum's full-time care um, as a very settled child. Um, and I feel that that placement with his grandparents at that time was best for both him and for mum. Um, and now it's a wonderful success story where his grandparents still are very much part of the group, though they no longer have his care, but can talk to the positivity that can come to newer grandparents moving in that potentially don't see the light at the end of the tunnel at this point in time. So unfortunately, it's not um, the, the majority um, that this situation uh, ends up in, but it can happen, and that is definitely what we work towards, uh, definitely what we support our, our grandparents through. Thank you. Uh, Fred. So um, Fred, Fred and Margaret are two of our founding members of the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program from NARA. 
Um, Fred is 85 years old and very much still involved in our groups. Um, Fred and Margaret raised their grandson from a very early age. Um, they did attempt um, some uh, co-parenting with uh, their daughter, but unfortunately that wasn't successful. So they remained full-time carers of their grandchild, Trent. Um, they have uh, supported the uh, commencement of what became our third group in Shell Harbour in 2018. Um, traveling from Sussex Inlet, which um, for those of you that are not local, is a good hour and a half trek um, to Shell Harbour in order to um, encourage and support and um, welcome the new members to the Shell Harbour group. Um, Margaret unfortunately passed in uh, 2019. She was um, a big loss to the group, as you can probably see within that photo. That's pretty much how Margaret showed up to everything. Um, she was a joy and she was a voice. So she definitely um, made me go through the ringer when I first started managing, that's for sure. She, um, I needed her tick of approval before we could continue forward. Um, just again, to show the type of support that this group gives to each other and that staff gives. Uh, after the passing of Margaret, obviously a huge loss to Fred. Um, they had been together for over 50 years and um, Fred found himself suddenly alone. Um, not long after Margaret's passing, we had the impacts of the South Coast bushfires, um, which heavily impacted Fred's area. And Fred was unable then to have visits from his family who were living in Sydney and Melbourne at that time, um, including his grandson who had moved away. Um, the group was so concerned about Fred and had taken him under their wing um, that they alerted staff to their concerns. Um, and we had staff members and their family members head out to Fred's property and clean gutters and um, do as much bush fire proof as we could. Um, Fred didn't want to leave his home, as you can imagine. It was, he was still grieving Margaret at that time um, and chose to stay where he was. Um, he's so appreciative of the support and he would be the first at any event that we hold, um, any event that he attends to stand up and thank Mission Australia and the group for everything that they have done um, for his family and now especially for him. Um, Prior to COVID, Fred, as I said, was attending um, at that stage the three groups that we had. So that based from Ulladulla to Nowra to Shell Harbour, quite a bit of travel for him. Um, during lockdown, Fred was still one of our most engaged participants, but obviously not face to face. Um, he started um, encouraging one of our other uh, grandparent, male grandparent. Um, uh, participants to start with uh, aeroplane model building. He loves his model aeroplanes. And so they would connect via uh, FaceTime, uh, which we introduced to the men, and they would build their mo model aeroplanes um, together. So he, um, again, staunch advocate for the program, um, one of our most loved members, and um, we look forward to Fred continuing on and engaging um, with the group and mentoring as he has um, up until this point. Thank you. So our support groups, as I mentioned, um, I mentioned three of them already. So NARA was established in 2004, um, strongly advocated for by those local grandparents. Um, we branched out to Ulladulla in 2011 and we still hold that um, group every fortnight on a Tuesday, um, which is also very well attended and has been long-term by um, our grandparents that started with us in 2011. Um, some of those, again, have raised their grandchildren now to adults and um, still continue on just as the support um, for new members coming in. Um, more recently, we started with our Shell Harbour group, which I mentioned Fred and Margaret were a huge part of. Um, as you can see, the, the pattern here is um, 
over the years and the word getting out about our program and success of our program, we find more and more grandparents, whether that be that they are part of another Mission Australia internal um, program or we have had in the Shell Harbour instance just a grandparent turning up to our local office and asking if we run the Grandparents Raising Grandchildren program in their area. Um, at, as soon as we're alerted to the need um, and we have the um, ability to spread ourselves into another area and the participants in which to do so, um, we welcome that. We, are, um, we absolutely love this program. We love running it. I love managing it. And to see it blossom the way that it has um, is truly heartwarming and signifying of the importance of these types of support groups. Um, Shell Harbour, um, oh, sorry, moving on from Shell Harbour, you can see uh, we established a grandparents raising grandchildren group in Goulburn during COVID lockdown. Um, that was an interesting event, but um, we did manage our first face-to-face -face, uh, lunch last week. And all of the participants um, were there um, in our Goulburn Mission Australia office, ready for their tea and cakes and to finally be there in person. Um, there was a number of those who had, a uh, number of those participants, sorry, who had connected previously um, outside of uh, the group. And so it was lovely to have them in such a supportive place with our staff. And also uh, the referrals that have come from then and the intake has really boosted. So we're looking to have another uh, group probably around the size of our NARA group, which is our largest um, in Goulburn. So we're really excited for that. And um, for those of you that have already been introduced to some of our other groups, we really look forward to introducing you to, um, to our Goulburn group so that you can hear their stories um, and, and see what having this support group has already done for them. Okay, thank you. So within our groups that are held either weekly or fortnightly, um, although we do welcome a lot of that to be just about the support of the grandparents, um, giving them some space to discuss current issues or celebrations, um, and just to catch up with each other in a supportive environment, we do also like to run educational programs um, and parenting programs. So our staff are trained in black box parenting circle of security and bringing up great kids. All of these are offered within our groups and we have found great success um, when surveying our participants afterwards. Um, they really take on board, especially with our younger kids, these strategies that they can utilise to make life at home a little bit easier, especially during COVID lockdown that was quite difficult for a number of our, our members when um, they had the children at home without the respite of school. Um, so we were able to run that for them um, and to continually support their parenting styles and their parenting strategies. Um, I think as parents, we can all utilise that support sometimes, but especially for our grandparents. Um, they are also able then to support each other through those um, programs. And some of them did connect on the in-between to talk about how they practice them and what strategies they've put in place. Um, it's always a bit of a laugh to hear about their stories as well. Um, as we know, grandchildren or any child does not come with a handbook. And so we've always found that the grandparents are open to these types of supports um, and this type of education. We have um, support group activities that we run through. And um, whilst they um, would probably explain that we take them through some, um, oh, as you can see there in the, the picker flag, um, I think they think that we're testing their brilliance, but um, what we are actually doing, there is a method to our madness is activities are designed to um, support memory strength, um, brain health and function, um, as well as keeping grandparents informed on the latest information. So we will throw in there um, any information around social media events, um, any cu current issues that are approaching. So that would be talking um, through our um, anti-bullying on um, social media, teaching them the technologies of social media so that they are more able to stay over um, and on top of what their grandchildren are accessing um, on their phones or on their iPads. Um, we talk them through how to put security onto those phones or iPads to ensure that it keeps their children safe and protected. 
Um, we do also like to have a lot of fun. Um, it's nothing like a laugh. Um, our grandparents um, love to have a joke and a giggle and so are always willing to jump in on games and dress-ups um, and uh, a bit of comedy here and there. Um, we also hold events, uh, high tea events, our Seniors Week event, uh, which we love to celebrate. And we generally do receive a grant from the local councils to hold these events. They know we have this group and they want to celebrate them as much as what we do. Um, we have morning teas where we ask them to invite along a friend, um, not only just to boost the group, but also it gives us a little bit more insight around um, their day-to-day -day livings outside of our group. And it also welcomes... Um, the, uh, the group itself um, to uh, explore other um, methods of referral and to bring in um, newer members. It generally just takes word of mouth. Um, and so we have had referrals come through after we've had grandparents and their friends come in to our group and they think, you know, I've got a neighbour who's raising their grandchild. And all of a sudden we've got an influx again, which is really what this is about, um, is getting the word out. Um, it is also an opportunity to invite our donors along to catch up with the groups, um, to talk about their experiences. Our, um, our group members love nothing more than to thank the people that make this, um, this program able to continue. Um, and it's lovely to see our donors sitting with our participants um, and enjoying being served their high tea um, and celebrate the work that's been been happening. I know that it's really important as well for our donors to, um, to talk to our grandparents and ensure that we're on the right path with the support that we're providing. Um, and if there's anything that we can change or manoeuvre to make it better, um, they're always great days. Thank you. Oh, our respite weekends away. Um, these are the most celebrated and have been severely missed over COVID. Um, so we've been unable to hold these for the past two years because of restrictions. Um, it has probably been, besides that face-to-face -face interaction, one of the, um, the biggest losses over the past two years, I'd say, um, as far as the grandparents and the grandchildren are concerned. Whilst we've been able to continue uh, to engage with our grandparents via social media platforms, Unfortunately, we haven't had the same interaction with our grandkids. Um, this always provided us an opportunity to reach out and to provide support for them, um, being that they are just as important in this scenario. Um, prior to COVID, we would hold two of these respite weekends away a year. Um, it is limited to the amount of people that we can take at a time due to staff. So by holding two, we um, were ensuring that everybody had an opportunity to have the weekend away. Um, staff and family participate within these um, events as well. Um, although I can't point it out to you, I am indeed within that picture and two of my children are there also. Um, it's, uh, I found within this group that um, my family have also um, built a, a strong um, link with these kids. A lot of these kids are local. My kids go to school with these kids. Um, and it gives them a real understanding of what's happening and different dynamics within families. And so I'm just as thankful for this, for what it teaches my kids, my staff kids, as what we can do for the kids that are involved. Um, on the weekends away, it's a generally a two-night stay. We try to take them somewhere a bit fancy. Um, and we always have some events played out. So the Friday night, we, have, we all meet where we're staying. We have um, a lovely dinner together, activities. At the end of year, um, Santa will normally make an appearance as he is here, um, which the kids always love, even the older kids um, and the grandparents. Um, as of Saturday, we take the grandchildren, so staff take the grandchildren um, out on an event that's designed specifically to work with the large age gaps that we've got with these kids. So we have um, anything from, as you can see, a young toddler being held there um, to our 17-year-olds. And what's really heartwarming for me is that these kids, even at the age of 17, where we're probably not deemed that cool to hang out with anymore, they're still coming along um, and still really willing participants because they've grown up 
um, alongside some of these other participants and may only get to see them um, at these respite weekends away, which is for them could be annually. Um, so it's great to see them come together as one big family. Um, the older kids are always great with the younger kids. We always have a bunch of fun, as you can see here. And it also provides just a day for the grandparents to have respite um, where they can all just catch up, um, whether or not they choose to stay in their cabins and sleep all day or whether they go and do some activities for themselves. Um, this is something that we really look forward to hopefully getting back on board at the end of this year, um, being that we can stay in that face-to-face -face connection. Um, uh, just going back to, to Fred, who I introduced you to before, um, one of my staff members asked that I, um, that I make sure that I bring up that Fred is our barbecue man on these weekends away and you never see a cranky Fred unless you don't show up in time to the barbecue. So um, he loves to put on his apron and take over um, and uh, all the while with the grandmothers behind covering up dessert to ensure that the young kids don't get to that before they eat dinner. Fred doesn't like that either. So um, again, it's just these small things that kind of make these events for us. Um, and yeah, I guess even just now revisiting it reminds me of how much we miss it. So I look forward to hopefully being able to, um, to provide that again for them at the end of this year. Thank you. Okay, so this is some of our arts and crafts. Um, some of our grandparents groan when we mention it, but they do love it, as you can see, quite willing participants in this. Um, again, when it comes to these things, there is a method to our madness. So our arts and crafts really is about just entertaining um, them for the two hours that, that we're at a meeting, but more so providing them with some activities that they can do with the younger grandchildren. We try to base it um, around whatever is happening at that period of time, as you can see in the top photo, where um, we're doing some Christmas um, decorations and Christmas cards. Um, so what we try to do is encourage them to look for things around the home. So in the case that they do have a quiet weekend or they've found that um, they're struggling to entertain one of the younger grandkids, that it's something that they can pull out um, and, and do with them and participate and teach. It's also great for hand-eye coordination and for those finer motor skills for our grandparents. So again, it's something that we're actively training um, and actively strengthening to ensure that these are going to be activities that they can continue to do with their grandchildren moving forward. Um, we do like to make them fun. So you can see within this, the group sewing activity of doggy bandanas. Um, a lot of our grandparents have and love their dogs. Um, my worker at that stage, Kelly, also um, was a mad dog fan and had made this for her grandparent, uh, sorry, for her, for her puppies. And the grandparents, after seeing pictures of this, had requested that she taught them how to do it. So even Fred got into um, this activity and using a um, sewing machine. They all, um, we provided all the materials and um, had a day of, of creating these and um, they took them home. We received a number of photos afterwards of um, them displaying them on their, their puppies at home. Okay, thank you. Uh, so monthly, we provide a newsletter to all of our participants. Um, we have over 100 grandparents um, actively participating on our system, but not all of them engage within those face-to-face -face groups. Um, that doesn't mean they don't get our support. Um, they've just provided that support in a different way. So our newsletters um, are very important for us to engage with those grandparents. We um, use the, the monthly newsletter to provide details about the activities that will be happening within each group and the dates of those as a reminder. Um, we try to encourage those that haven't been there for a while just to pop in and say, hey. Um, we also talk about local events within each area. So a newsletter is provided, there are four separate newsletters provided for each area to make them relevant. Um, we provide links to support services outside of Mission Australia. Um, we always have, we're informed of new programs that are popping up within the area. If we feel that that may be relevant to our grandparents or even the grandchildren, um, more importantly, we ensure that there's links and phone numbers to that. Um, we also like to put in our how-to guides. Um, Kelly, again, who's one of our most creative employees, um, likes to find things like 
uh, accessing Centrelink or um, how to apply for your um, carer's allowance. All of these sorts of things that our grandparents um, find difficult to do, difficult to navigate in those systems, she does a how-to guide. Um, and she does that for many of our programs, but we found it really successful in the grandparents raising grandchildren. It's step-by-step guides on those sorts of things that we may take for granted um, that we would do on a regular basis. Uh, that they may not have done for a very long time or may not have ever had to have done. Um, and this can even be going up to when their grandchild is ready to get their learner's licence. Very different process from 60 years ago. So um, we talk them through that. So it's one of those things that where we can engage many grandparents even outside of our current um, face-to-face -face participants and ensure that they're getting um, that support as well. Um, we also like to put in a letter from our family support workers. So that changes um, month to month on who's, who's putting that in. That's also just reaching out as a, a hello and an update from our program, what's happening, um, and personalises it for, for those grandparents that we haven't seen for a little while. Thank you. Oh, sorry, before we go, sorry. <laughs> I didn't speak about our homework club. We do offer homework clubs. This is kind of an add-on, a, um, a value add, as you'd see. It was, wasn't something that was designed specifically under the program, but was something that would continue to be brought up as a need by the grandparents. Um, they did struggle, and you will see this in the coming video. Um, Lynn actually mentions this, that um, they struggle with um, homework or up-to-date curriculum. Um, many of uh, our grandparents, if they did complete their education, it was a long time ago. Um, and curriculum has definitely changed since then, it changes rapidly. Um, and we found that one of the, the biggest defeats that the grandparents found was when it came to education. Um, so amongst the group and before my time, it was originated in NARA that we began a homework club, which encouraged the grandparents raising grandchildren participants to bring the grandchildren along. And we would support them with a, with a tutor. Um, to complete homework or to complete assessments um, and to work through any um, particular areas that they were struggling with. We also started to open this up to the wider community. Um, we just felt that this was another way in a safe environment to introduce the children together, um, not only for our participants, but those potentially just going to the same school, having similar struggles for different reasons. Um, we were able to watch them engage with each other, um, again, create that safe space to have our um, grandchildren open up a little bit more, to work on um, strengthening those peer relationships. Um, because of the success of this homework club, we then um, were able to roll that out in our Aladella group um, and then to our Shell Harbour group. We've yet to be able to do that in Goulburn, obviously due to COVID restrictions, but we aim to continue that on. Um, Aladella Group has just started. Um, so we're hoping to bring NARA back very soon. Um, and we will then obviously follow on with the other two groups. But again, just another success story of the progress of this relationship and the holistic approach that we tend to take to ensure we're supporting not only the grandparents, but the grandchildren as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to Lynn. Um, some of you may have met Lynn previously. She's another um, of our long-term members. She is a staunch community advocate um, and has raised four, oh, it's currently still raising three of them, um, but has had four of her grandchildren um, in her care alongside her husband. Um, Lynn really took the um, grandparent carer role on um, with such a, loving nature. Um, there was never a question about um, what she was doing or why she was doing it. Um, and she very quickly jumped into community to advocate for funding for grandparents within this um, situation, to advocate for the continuation of groups such as ours. Um, she spent a lot of her time in her grandchildren's school, ensuring support was there. Um, and she was recognised so much so that after being nominated by Mission Australia, she was um, awarded the um, local women's award on International um, Winners Day. And within uh, that photo where she's holding her certificate, 
um, behind her as well as one of our employees um, is a number of the um, grand raise, uh, grandparents raising grandchildren now a group um, who were all ecstatic to hear um, that she'd won and took their time off on a Sunday to go and um, watch the uh, ceremony and to watch Lynn be awarded and um, and definitely to celebrate with her afterwards. Again, just showing um, that camaraderie that comes with the group. And with that, I'll, um, I'll let Lynn tell you a little bit more about herself. Hi, my name's Lynn. Uh, along with my husband, we brought up four grandkids. We've per personally got three in the moment in our care. One's 22 and the twins are 13. If it wasn't for mission and their help and guidance and being there for people in our situation, I don't know what would have happened. Um, they've helped through court systems, they've helped with the departments, helped with homework with the kids that I don't understand whatsoever, helped with getting them access to doctors that we can't get to, access to mental health issues that we can't get to, help with access in um, childcare, um, help with our mental health issues as having a support group for us. Um, in the past it's been, of course not this COVID, um, cup of tea time Thursdays for our now group where we can just vent out for two hours and have a laugh, have a cry, have catch up with other people in our situations that we don't feel we're on our own. Um, if it wasn't for mission, I don't know where our family would have been. I don't know where I would have been. I don't know how we would have coped. So thank you very much. Um, do appreciate everything mission has done for us in the past and hope it still continues because a lot of people out there do need your help. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I almost forgot that we had this slide up and I was going to mention earlier that we really did need a COVID slide. So I'm glad this is here. Um, COVID changed everything for us um, back in 2020, being that this group actively participates face-to-face -face and then suddenly we were unable to. Um, one of the wonderful things about this, and, um, and I really celebrate my staff for, is that we became a pilot program within using a social media platform to hold our groups uh, moving forward. So we used Facebook, um, which you could imagine a number of our grandparents um, had not been privy to um, unless it was by their grandchildren. Um, and so we went about supporting our um, grandparents in starting up their own Facebook profiles. Um, this was somewhat difficult, especially when we could only provide that support over the phone. Um, but we definitely worked on supporting them being far more tech savvy than what they have been before. Um, we actually, uh, there was a, a couple of our participants who just couldn't get it over the phone. They really struggled with this um, and it became very frustrating for them, um, especially because some of them were utilising um, if the, uh, they were utilising smartphones that they hadn't used anything for except for calling a number. Um, they were even struggling to do text messages at that stage and weren't interested in it. But they really wanted to connect um, with the group continually, um, being that they were far more isolated than ever. So one of my um, staff members who um, was highly dedicated to making this happen actually would travel to their homes and stand outside of a window with her phone um, encouraging them and instructing them on how to make this happen. Um, what came from that was um, something new and something exciting. And um, our participants did actively um, stay online with us. Um, we were able to then do um, live activities and um, we take them on bushwalks over their phone with us and um, do our creative events um, on that platform. And then they were able to engage also with each other. Um, we had a Facebook group where we kept everyone up to date with what was happening and it actually brought all of our groups together on one platform, um, which only ever really happens when we have a big event or one of those respite weekends. So that was great. 
Um, that happened within the first year of our lockdown and isolation. In our second year, um, I think everyone felt a little bit more disheartened. We'd just come back together and then we're locked down again. Um, also, the stress and fear around COVID and um, the significant impact that was having on every community at that stage um, is noteworthy. It was something that we noticed within our participants, um, especially our older participants, um, that we really needed to work with and really needed to support them through. So our um, moving, moving on from that, I guess our focus was on mental health um, and being able to connect them and stay connected with them on a more one-to-one -one basis than what we've had to before. Um, luckily for us, we have been able to regroup. And as I mentioned before, we've actually had um, our first face-to-face -face contact with our, with our participants. Um, we were all at that NARA group. And um, I must say, even though we were, it was quite a solemn time um, coming from what had happened, there was also um, the love in the room for everybody. You know, they're just, they're so supportive of one another. Um, they were so grateful and thankful to be face face-to-face uh, -face again um, and within each other's company. And given the fact that it was um, quite a difficult moment, we still managed to have a laugh together um, and to celebrate that we could all still come together and that we were back. So um, we look forward to that moving forward in the rest of the year um, to be a continual thing, fingers crossed, that um, operating in a pandemic is not something that we'll have to do again. Thank you. My staff. So I needed to put a slide in about my staff members again. Some of you would have met the, um, them along the way. We have some, um, some staff members that are no longer within the group, but are still within Mission Australia. Um, and those who are our um, staff are comprised of youth workers, um, counsellors and community service workers, case workers. Um, they provide casework support, counselling and support for our, um, uh, for our grandchildren based on um, their experience and their knowledge. Um, they love what they do and um, they're very, very supportive of the group. Um, they are well celebrated by myself and by our organisation. Um, they are truly very nurturing, um, empathetic and heartwarming warming people. Um, during the pandemic, um, Natalie, who is in the centre in the pink, um, was our uh, technology queen who taught everyone how to use Facebook and um, she was quite active on our lives. Um, she loves to um, encourage our grandparents out and about, um, has had to do so more so lately than ever. Um, she's also um, just completed her counselling certificate and really did so because she recognised how much additional support our grandparents need. So um, I would, uh, this is just a big thank you from me to them for all the work that they've done, um, and especially in the last two years. Thank you. Um, so this is Heather. Um, we're going to um, end uh, on um, Heather's video. I think um, for me, uh, we had many of our grandparents want to contribute today, and we would have loved to have showed them all. Um, Heather is one of our newer members in our Shell Harbour group. Um, and I just think that within this video, she encapsulates um, exactly what this group is for um, and exactly why this support is provided. Um, and I, um, I look forward to her sharing this with you. Thank you, Dan. Good afternoon and thank you. My name is Heather and I'm a grandparent carer. We have one child in our care currently. I have been involved with the Grandparent Carers Group now for mm, about three years, I think. Best thing ever. I asked the child in our care what it meant to her and her response was, awesome growth vacations, Nan. And I said, what else? She said, I, I play with kids like me. And I thought, wow, you know, that's what it means to her. But it also means a whole lot more. It means having someone to talk to. It means 
being with people who are in a similar situation for varying reasons but who just get it when you come across things that you're unfamiliar with sex education you're giving the opportunity to be educated when it comes to that change of life for your children your care you're supported through that journey and that's been a big support you are supported in lots of ways I can't even begin to name them knowing that someone's there for you comes around with a care package knowing that if there's an issue of concern domestic violence to think of one there's someone else to talk to who can connect you with other organizations and in our case that's godsend it means an enormous amount in so many ways too many to list in a brief conversation now and I'd have to stop and, and there's, there's just so much words fail me it's the it's the getting together fortnightly which at the moment I miss enormously although we are managing to do that to a degree with online things um, just trying to educate some of us oldies in technology uh, it's sharing stories it's learning new craft and being able to take that home and having the resources in and there to sit down and share those moments with the children in your care and create something together it's a tool in that capacity it's more than words can say it's the one place I belong as a grandparent you normally send the children home but when you take on the parenting role that's not the case it means that the situation with your own friends changes you can't just go out with your own friends like you once might have because your responsibility now is like a young person but you go to children's parties and you don't fit in with the young parents but you happily talk to the grandparents there but your situation is not the same but with grandparents group it is the same for the grandchildren your care it's the same and from that perspective I say thank you because we found a place where as a family we belong and that means everything thank you Thank you. So that concedes um, our presentation today. Um, I thank you all for joining us um, and participating and um, we welcome any questions. Thanks so much, Belinda. Um, that was an absolutely um, lovely presentation. Um, there are a couple of questions. Um, can you tell us if there is an upper age limit for grandchildren for the grandparents to join the program? So as long as the, grandpa the grandparents have grandchildren within their care, it's usually up until the age of 18. Um, but we do have grandparents who are still participating with adult grandchildren. Thank you. Um, do you ever get uh, other family members like aunties or uncles um, that contact you asking to join the program as well? Yes, yeah, so actually um, just yesterday I received um, a request from a, um, a, 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 actually she used to be a, a member of, um, an employee of Mission Australia and she knew of this program. Um, she's recently just um, gained custody of her daughter-in-law's sister's child. So technically not um, a blood relation, but it is considered a kinship care. Um, and so she's asked to join the program and we would love to support her moving forward. So we definitely do receive um, different carers. And if, if we feel that we could support them in the way that, um, that they require, then we would invite them in.
Sorry, I've just lost you from my screen for a moment, Belle. Okay. Stay with me for one moment. Um, there was one other question about, um, you know, are the grandchildren always related to each other as well? No. So um, on, on the most occasions then, um, then yes, they would be because it would generally be the removal of a, um, a number of the grandchildren from the same environment, um, but not always. And so we have had a situation where we have had um, two a grandparent couple take on a grandchild from previous um, relationships so the two grandchildren weren't technically related, but that is a rare occurrence. Uh, thank you, Bill. Um, that's, I think, all the, the time we have left for questions today. Uh, Belinda, thank you once again um, for presenting to us and our supporters today. The dedication of your team uh, and the grandparent community is so apparent and it's absolutely lovely to see that. Um, we really thank you. Um, I also wanted to express Thanks for Lynn and Heather um, for taking the time to do those videos as well. They were really, really heartwarming to hear their stories. Um, and it just shows you how much the support is really needed. Um, so thanks once again, and thank you for all of our supporters for joining us today. Um, we hope you can join us for another presentation soon. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.